summertime is fast approaching, which means that it's time to have fun in the sun and romance and sundresses and cute little dates. And because I have zero dates and nothing going on romantically in my life, I'm gonna read romance. <laughs> I'm not lonely at all. I'm fine. Everything's fine. I am sure if you are a book lover like me, you have a list, a list ever-growing list of books you want to read and this summer I'm going to tackle them because I'm getting out of my life slump people you hear me this single Pringle is not gonna spend her summer being sad and lonely she's gonna spend it reading and being lonely <laughs> so today I've decided let's go romance let's get some queer romance in here happy pride too Mm. I think it's finally time that I read The Romantic Agenda by Claire Kahn. Also, this cover, if it'll focus on it. <gasps> this is the summer I want, and I want to bag me a man. This is the summer dress I need to wear. This is the hairstyle I need to emulate. Am I... I think I'm doing okay. But this is a cute summer romance about a girl who is asexual. And she is confessing her feelings for a guy who she's had a crush on forever, but he kind of has feelings for someone else. I know, so hard. I've read Claire Kahn's other book, which also has a sexuality representation. I did enjoy it. I did think it was a little too, like, smoothing over the asexuality. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but it's this book. I thought it was a cute little four-star read. So I'm hoping this with her next book and because this cover is so immensely beautiful Hoping for a five-star, but romance has done me so dirty recently <sighs> And I don't think it's because of my single Pringle attitude. Okay, I think it's because You know, there's a buff guy and a hot girl and there's no heart. There's no flavor There needs to be more than just hot people, you know, that's what movies are for before I get more into this book and diving into ooh, the first sentence, I did want to mention I relaunched my Patreon. I do have my June TBR up uh, if you want to check it out. And I also have a free video if you want to just see my writing vlogs, which I will be doing on my Patreon. All that is linked in the description. No pressure. No pressure. Every penny helps, but like no pressure, obviously. If you're here watching this, I appreciate it. So as I mentioned, instead of trying to find a date, I'm just going to read this fun romance. And I love checking out the first sentence of books, so I figured we could read it together. Let's see. Dedication. For anyone and everyone who needs it. I did need a dedication. That's how lonely I am. <laughs> so we have chapter one. It's a Thursday. Dreams are such strange things to have and to hold. That was a little too cheesy for my liking. I freaking love cheesy rom-coms but sometimes reading it can be a little bit harder than watching it you know what I mean because you just have to there's so much there's there's like 10 hours of it versus two <laughs> so hopefully not too cheesy but I do remember her writing style Claire Pan being a little bit more on the flowery side which hopefully I like I recently didn't like honey girl I know it was too flowery it was too existential it was it was a little it wasn't what I was hoping for sadly but it's okay. I'm gonna keep looking for the romances I'm looking for and share you share the journey, you know? So that was a little cheesy, but hoping that the cheesiness will continue but be matched with a character that I deeply care about, who I'm rooting for. Hopefully she bags this guy, Malcolm, who knows? Or bags whoever is best for her. That's also another thing with romance. They'd be throwing some basic ass men into romance and being like, he's the best thing ever. I don't see it. I don't see it. And then the women are just like, I'm not like other girls. So let's try and find something that's a little bit more elevated. Here's hoping. <laughs>
Hey friends, I already have pretty mixed feelings about this book. I'll explain. I am 30 pages in and I love the writing style. It is definitely giving fun romance vibes, but I am hating the male in like love interests so much. <laughs> I have a feeling, I haven't really read the description on the back fully because I don't want to be spoiled because I feel like romance books do that where they'll give you the whole story on the back of the book and I'm just like, don't want that. Here's a quick summary from what I've gauged in these first 30 pages. We have Joy, our main character, who is a beautiful, asexual, 30 flirty woman who has been in love with one of her best friends, Malcolm, since college. And he has been through many ups and downs, but she's been there through all of them. He recently was engaged last year and ended up getting left because of Joy. The lady left going like, you love Joy more than you love me. Apparently, you know, you can't have a best girlfriend without it being romantic. Um, but on Joy's behalf, she's like, I want it to be romantic. It's not at the moment. And Malcolm has found some spark of romance with another woman. And he's asking Joy to go on this trip with them. So the girl's friend, so Summer being the other girl, the other girl in his life, and Fox, her friend, so he, Malcolm's inviting Joy just to entertain this dude, this random guy, and her feelings are mad hurt and mine are too because your girl deserves better than that. So I'm really hoping that this other guy, Fox, delivers, okay? I need a male interest that is like interesting, that I have interest in, who I can, who I can root for. Rooting for Joy, do not care about Malcolm. I don't think even if after 10 years he finally now has like the courage to be with her, I don't want it. <laughs> I don't want it. She deserves better. She deserves someone who saw her the whole time. That's how I feel. That's how I'm feeling. 30 pages in. I will update you more later, but I've decided to actually go on my own little solo date today. I'm going to go see Transformers by myself. I always go to the movies by myself. Don't be like my abuela and be like, who are you going with? I'm not going with anyone. I am my own date. I'm about to head to the movies to watch Transformers, I've decided, as a little solo date. And I think I'm gonna also go to Barnes & Noble's after, but I had a complaint and I needed to share it with you. This is my cute little purse, love it. I can like use it as a shoulder brag or like a cross body. The complaint is she's cute, she's fashionable, but, 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 books don't fit in her. It's like the rudest thing. I would have to squish my book. She just, she just almost barely fits, so. <laughs> Not only should pants always have pockets, but I think bags should always fit books. Just say. Y'all, it is much later. <laughs> I went to the movies, as you guys saw, and Transformers, very cute. I also was with an audience of people who were like literally clapping. They were so excited about Transformers, so it was a, it was a great vibe. But I have since been reading and finally got to the 100 page mark, and I'm in love with Fox. So, without giving any spoilers, I'll quickly tell you what's happening with the story right now. Basically, as y'all heard from earlier, so our main girl Joy loves Malcolm, her best friend, who is completely uninterested in her as they have been friends for 10 years, but they're also both very obsessed with each other. They are very codependent friends and Joy recently has like really decided, okay, I am in love with you and I have to tell you that I love you, Malcolm. And what does he do? He invites her to a camping trip to impress the girl he is currently trying to date. They're like not dating yet, but he's wants to spring the let's be exclusive question mm. <laughs> just such a weird vibe and she's obviously thrown and upset and she's trying to figure out like am i going to share my feelings am i going to be kind of manipulative and like lie to him and this girl he's hanging out with and this guy friend who is summer's friend summer is the girl that malcolm's into there's there's four people follow me so malcolm best friend joy our main lady who i'm rooting for Summer, the girl Malcolm is into and wants to date, and then Fox, 
Summer's friend that she for some reason brought along to this weekend trip. It's his freaking birthday weekend and he doesn't even like doing outdoorsy stuff and he's now stuck with them doing outdoorsy stuff for the weekend. Third wheeling it, fourth wheeling it with this odd shenanigans. But, 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 I'm literally dying. Okay, I am so shipping Fox and Joy together. They are, they are the team. They are A1. They, they are the ones who should be dating, okay? Malcolm could never. He is anal and super plan oriented, very specific. He has a literal hour agenda, like hour by hour agenda for this vacation. No thank you. Fox, on the other hand, snarky, brooding, so it is a not grumpy sunshine romance because technically Joy is also very grumpy, so grumpy grumpy romance? Loving it. And Fox has kind of figured out Joy, ma'am, ma'am, you're not being secretive with your feelings, so how about we make Malcolm jealous together? Are we about to fake date? Are we about to fake date to help Joy bag another man? What an exciting turn of events, might I say. Love Fox, great guy. We love him. It is somehow 1 a.m. Um, very happy with this um, development because I was very concerned when I first picked up this book and was reading about Malcolm and how he treats her. I am now 180 pages into this book. I have maybe, let's see, how many pages are in this book? Okay, there's 315 pages, 180, you do the math, 135 pages left. Not that much left in the story and I'm adoring how Fox is just bringing to light so many things that Joy should be aware of. It's just, it's kind of heartwarming and not at the same time. Okay, so like, how do I explain this? There was a yelling match that just happened, that I just read about, that I experienced. And not necessarily romantic, <laughs> but I love how we're just talking about love and romance in general in this book, especially being ace, loving the ace representation about every ace is different, they're figuring out what they like, what they don't like, their boundaries, respecting how they feel and their mood. Love all of that. But like, yeah, there was this yelling match and we're talking about obviously this, this pair of old friends who love each other very deeply and is it romantic for them or is it platonic for one are we just assuming communication is just so messy i don't know i like the fact that they're they're talking about like really it shouldn't be this hard <laughs> i'm still i'm still team fox even if she ends up not being with anybody in this book which would be beautiful because you definitely shouldn't be with anyone who doesn't deserve you and she deserves joy you see her rocking this yellow ass beautiful dress she deserves an icon a legend. She deserves the hostess with the mostess. I'm just, I'm having lots of feelings and I'm having a great time, which is exactly what I wanted. It's not too like unrealistic at all. Like I actually think it's very realistic. Malcolm is trying to decide whether or not Summer, this girl he likes, can be the one, can be the wife of his children and like spend his life with them. And it's like, mm, Joy's like, I don't see it. Fox is like, I don't see it. I don't see why y'all think this is a okay relationship. Why are we rushing to marriage and children all the time? Anyway, anyhow, probably should stop reading here. I probably shouldn't keep reading. You know, that would be a mistake. I don't have plans tomorrow, but I don't make smart decisions. Uh, we'll see what happens. I'm so invested. I need Joy to be happy. I demand it. Good morning. It's the next day. And somehow last night, I don't know what got into me. This story has really just hit me in the best way. I'm so pleasantly surprised. And this is what I want from a romance and i'll get more into that later okay i don't know how but last night i ended up getting to page 249 which is wild i have like less than 100 pages left and i've been enjoying this book so much i've dog-eared a few pages which i know is like very criminal to a lot of people in the book community but i don't know if you can see 
that I've dog-eared. A couple scenes where I just talked about asexuality in such a good and profound way. I'm just pleasantly surprised by the representation here. Um, I have one hour left in the audiobook, so I'm going to finish her and give you my review. This ending, I do want it to slap. I am really concerned about like who she's gonna pick and all that stuff because technically, I mean, there wasn't a third act breakup. No one's really together right now, but there might be a third act breakup. And if she's picking somebody, I don't know. I just, I'm a little worried about how we're gonna wrap all this up just because I have been enjoying it so much and that if it ends with a garbage ending, I'm gonna be pissed. <laughs> don't let me down, you little, you little gem at the moment. Everyone be proud of me, I finally got semi-dressed. I'm still in sweatpants, but you know what? Got out of my PJ shirt, which is most important. But that finishes the romantic agenda. I'm so pleasantly surprised by this book, and I'm gonna go into a few bits of this book, the asexual representation, that really just hit home for me, and I think has made this my new favorite book. Like when I think about people and them constantly asking about what's this, what's this, or that's a hard sell. So I was going to talk about that for a little bit and why this story is so cute and fun, even for non-aces. It is Pride Month, so I definitely recommend this. What a great time to read this. I'm so happy. And because you watched this whole video, I also do want to mention my next vlog. I'm finally going to read this behemoth of a book. <laughs> So get excited for my vlog for a day of fallen night. Just for you special people who stay to the very end, I appreciate you and love you. As I showed you earlier, I did dog ear some pages. I think you can kind of see them. I'm going to go back and annotate, annotate. But really quickly wanted to explain why it's just so touching. Because this book does kind of explain about the, you know, ace experience and how it's different for every person. Malcolm and Joy in this book are both asexual and they're having relationships with people who aren't and have lots of questions or assumptions. The first thing that I really loved and appreciated was the fact that Joy has a big like social media following and she'll post pictures of herself and in her body wearing like Savage X Fenty which is a lingerie line for any of you who don't know um, by Rihanna, Queen Rihanna, we love her. But what I loved about this representation is that a lot of people online gave backlash to be like, well, asexuals don't act like that. They don't show off their bodies. They don't do this. They don't do that. You can't be ace if you like looking sexy and all this, <laughs> just a bunch of stuff. It's like, not your body. Don't worry about it. The internet people always have so many opinions, but I love this discussion because it's like a lot of people will see someone enjoying their body as like inherently it meaning sex and not it being confident or just loving yourself or having any sort of artistic expression there are so many reasons to express yourself in that way and it's not always about sex i think we are just programmed to think everything is about sex in the male gaze and wanting to find a partner when it's like no I, i'm just confident and i love my body and i'm like really happy that this character loves her body and uh, it I loved that representation there was a specific passage that I pinpointed because I was just like yes girl love yourself be confident okay this next bit there's a lot of conversations that Joy brings up that Malcolm this guy that she's had an unrequited crush on for 10 years is so perfect for her and that if it doesn't work out with him like she has no chance of finding any romance and feeling very like broken and that no one will understand her that is such an ace problem and I feel that and I like love just the representation of her kind of being 30 and still figuring out her journey and it's like I'm 26 and we're all still figuring out if you're ace or even if you're queer or straight like giving yourself time like if you're literally 18, 21, 43 you are on your own journey there is no rush and when you find the right person you're gonna find the right person it's as simple as that and some people are the right people and that time will end and that's also okay so i i just really resonated with that point i was like who's gonna love little old me and my craggly ass with my needs i'm so needy but you know what someone's out there and they're gonna love it oh 
there was also just very good representation of intimacy and consent here that I bookmarked or dog-eared that I don't think I necessarily need to share with you. And then I genuinely did kind of tear up at this point because I was just shocked when there was a big reveal about people's feelings. I'm not going to spoil anything, but the conversation they had was just so cute and endearing. And it's, it's such an interesting conversation of love and having platonic love, but maybe it being romantic or unrequited this heart to heart literally kind of almost had me in tears because i was just like you guys deserve to be happy and you guys are just figuring out how to be happy they are trying to figure out how to be happy it was so cute and then there was also another big reveal reveal and big romantic gesture that i dog eared that was just so sweet because it's like that idea again of like i or not I, but like the main protagonist feeling like no one will ever understand or love her and then realizing that people do have feelings for her um, and being so scared to try. I think that's the thing about people. We are so scared to try. So those were just some key moments that I really loved about this book. Not being scared to try. <laughs> so, oh, it was so sweet. This is, I think, now a new favorite of this year. And if you have read this and liked this, I also highly recommend The Neighbor Favor. This one is about two streets, but they're bookish nerdy people and it's also very good so I'm finding my own little world of romance books that just get my heart pumping I, I'm on the hunt with you guys for romance that is touching but I also have romance that is on the steamy side that is completely like all about sexual tension because those are everyone has different needs for reading and just because you're ace or queer or whatever doesn't mean that you can't enjoy a plethora of romance books but it's just you know these are just so heartfelt to see so I'm on the hunt I'll keep you posted on everything that I find but uh, I'm so pleasantly surprised this was this was so touching not looking forward to reading this giant fantasy but I'm also looking forward to it at the same time it's like a like a cruel punishment it's gonna be fun in that weird way where it's like I don't want to do this but I'm gonna do it. Like when you have hot Cheetos and you've had like a bowl of hot Cheetos and you go in for that second bowl and you're like, I really shouldn't be doing this. My stomach will be upset with me. But then you're like, I'm gonna do it anyway. <laughs> That's how I feel. Okay, if you stay to the end, I love and appreciate you so, so much. Make sure to comment down below. What are you reading for Pride Month? I'm very curious. And in the description box, I will link down a bonus video if you are interested, linked on my Patreon for free. I also have my uh, June TBR. If you want to join the Patreon family and get bonus videos, uh, you can choose your price and get access to all bonus content. Obviously, you don't have to, but it's a way of supporting me. Or you could check out my Pengo Books, which is an app I sell books online, which is only in the States, but a lot of you guys are in the States. So if you're interested in some used books, check out the description below. The description box is your friend. <laughs> She's going to give you a free video and possibly cheap and affordable books if you are interested. So pleasantly surprised. I'm happy for this little summer romance journey. I'm hoping it's gonna just keep getting better and better, but I know there are gonna be some, some beefs. I'm gonna try and read another Talia Hibbert book, and I have so much beef with this woman, I can't tell you. I will link that video down below too, because, whoo, oh child, me and her, but I'm gonna give her another chance. Okay, I'm rambling at this point, but love, and appreciate you and hoping you have a beautiful rest of your day or night or whatever. I will see you in the next video. Uh, bye bye Oh, also is there any romance books y'all recommend? <gasps> Let me know. I want to know. Give me the tea, please. Thank you. Okay, bye.